Hello everyone and welcome to my review of F1 2010. Uh, F1 2010 was released by Codemasters in September 2010 and was released on the Windows, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 formats. The game was released to coincide with the climax of the 2010 F1 season and it couldn't have actually worked out much better for Codemasters because the 2010 season has transpired to be one of the more interesting and exciting ones in the F1 calendar. The game, it's, uh, the original game itself um, came out on the Wii in 2009 and this was pretty soon after Codemasters got the license to produce um, an F1 game. The Codemasters however decided that they were going to push back the Xbox 360, Windows and PlayStation 3 version of the game to coincide with the 2010 season and really I'm quite glad they did that. What this has enabled them to do, not only is it the most up to date it could possibly have been, it's got all of the, the drivers and the teams and the tracks from the 2010 season, but it has also enabled them to perfect the game. The game on the Wii was actually very good, but it was it really did need a lot more depth adding to it if it was going to be successful um, going into formats which have got games like Forza, um, the PC get PC which has got the Jeff Crammon Grand Prix series for it, and the PlayStation 3 which will someday I'm sure have the Gran Turismo 5 game release for it. So they really did need to up the ante, simply doing a high res version of the Wii game was never going to be enough and I'm pleased to say that Codemasters have actually delivered. First of all, um, there's a full blown career mode um, whereby you start out racing for one of the lesser teams and slowly work your way up. You do this you can do this one of two ways. You can catch the eye of, an, of one of the other teams around you by um, scoring points continuously in the races, um, you know, and also how you conduct yourself in interviews after the race plays a role too. Because if you come across as being a team player, then you're more likely to get not only get your own team on side, but you're also likely to become more appealing to go with one of the other teams as well. But what it really boils down to is what you do on the track. There's no substitute for that. And the fast route to success is being successful out there on the racing track. The other way as well is, is at a certain point in the season, um, you'll be asked in one of the interviews um, who you regard your rival to be. Um, now, how this works is, is, is often they will, they will say, do you consider such and such a body to be a rival, say for example Fernando Alonso or you know Lewis Hamilton or so on, it just really does depend on how well you're racing. If you say yes I consider them to be a rival, if you then outperform them in the season, in qualifying, in racing and so on and so forth, then you actually stand a chance of taking over their seat at the team. Their team will offer you a chance to race. So that can almost be a fast track way to the top, but you also have to bear in mind that the level of expectation will be so much greater um, with a top team as well. So if you're confident enough to be able to go out there and win races and do well in qualifying, then by all means, but it's particularly with the difficulty in the game ramped up, it's no surefire thing and it's not as easy as that. As usual with racing games, there's driving aids as well, and the driving aids in the game um, can be tweaked um, to tailor the individual abilities of the game's player. However, the game still represents a good challenge um, in terms of handling the car. Now initially when Codemasters got the license to make a Formula 1 game, I was a little bit concerned because Although I very much enjoyed the Dirt series, um, they also did Race Driver, which was more of a road and track based racing game. Now, the common thing that these games had was that they used the Ego engine. Now, although I liked the Dirt series, I didn't actually get on too well with Race Driver, 
I thought it was a lovely looking game and I thought you know it had fantastic potential but I just couldn't get on with the handling to me the cars seemed very um, very erratic very sort of floaty on the track they didn't seem to be much substance to them and quite often playing the game I would get really frustrated because it, they never felt like there was any um, weight to the car and you'd be sliding off the track hitting other cars hitting barriers and so on thankfully though Codemasters have not screwed up the handling with F1 2010 it's absolutely spot on the cars can be difficult to handle but Formula 1 cars are difficult to handle and so part of it is really learning how to to race the cars on the track learning the best ways to get around corners the optimal braking accelerating so on and so forth now as you can see in the footage here I have the racing line on and that's good that's a good way of learning the tracks because when the racing lines green it's an acceleration zone and when it's red slash orange color that's when you need to break so it's a good guide to be able to learn the tracks but once you become more familiar with the tracks and if you really want to challenge yourself take the racing line off it's also worth pointing out that some of the driving aids you can you can leave on such as the traction control are really useful should you be using a joypad especially a joypad like the PlayStation 3 one where the trigger buttons have a relatively short travel distance now this is particularly useful for wet weather races where hitting the accelerator too hard um, can actually result in the car spinning out even with the traction control switched on so it's almost now impossible to play it properly with the traction control off so it's not always a sign of inability of the game player to pop one of the assists on it, it just makes the game a lot more playable and it, it does work as well in addition to the full Grand Prix career, uh, full GP career, there is you can race a GP season, full Grand Prix season, or individual races, or partake in a time trial. On top of that, there's the usual online multiplayer, um, which again is a great deal of fun online, um, racing against your friends and, and what have you. It can be a great laugh, especially when you start smacking into one another and spinning one another out all over the track. With F1 2010 though, it has to be said that aggressive driving and dri purposely driving into other cars and so on isn't the best way of going about things. The game does dish out penalties, so for example if you continuously cut corners you'll be given a 10 second penalty. If you um, keep ploughing into other cars you'll also be given a 10 second penalty. And these are cumulative, so it happens per offence. Now you might win the race, but if you've got a 20 second penalty and the guy um, finishes 18 seconds behind you, he wins the race. Now, this is perhaps where Codemasters have kind of deviated away from the usual thing. The usual thing in Formula 1 is, is your stop goes and you drive through penalties and all of these things. But it's kind of clever what Codemasters have done because they've kept the game flowing um, and just added the penalties on retrospectively at the end which kind of works you know it's just as effective but it, it means that you know you can keep on going racing um, you, you know it's not being broken up all the time now when the game was released there were a number of bugs um, which was upsetting people but these bugs by and large now have been sorted out thankfully um, it did take them um, over a month to do it but thankfully they have all been sorted out now so um, the vast majority of the game should work okay there's always going to be the odd niggle here and there but you know thankfully it has been sorted I have to say that this is probably one of the best Formula 1 games that's come out there's not been that many on the PlayStation 3 certainly on the Xbox 360 I think this might be the first one on the 360 and the PC has obviously got the more detailed more simulated orientated ones but if you're looking for a really good Formula 1 game that you can tweak that you can keep playing then I recommend this 
So, thanks a lot.